From the dawn of time to the modern age, through your screen, up your earballs, and in your eye holes, it's Vinny Rants. Hello, Internet! Vinny D here, coming to you live from the Fortress of Fragitude. And welcome to another episode of Vinny Rants. Fresh on the heels of Nintendo's announcement of the new SNES Classic Mini, people are already wondering... What if they make an N64 Mini next year, most likely? Come on, it's gonna happen. And you might be asking yourself, Wait, does the N64 even have 30 games? And clearly, it's more of a quality over quantity machine. But I assure you, I've got a fully fleshed out list here. So let's get started. Number one, Mario 64, because of course you gotta have the Mario. In fact, do the Mario right now. I'll wait. Are you done? Well, number two, The Legend of Zelda, Ocarina of Time. This is another duh entry, gotta have Zelda, especially one of the most definitive titles in the entire series. Number three, The Legend of Zelda, Majora's Mask. Because it's freaking awesome and not well appreciated enough. Number four, Star Fox 64. One of the best damn games on the system. One of the best damn games ever and definitely the best damn Star Fox game ever. In fact, I still fire up the old N64 to this very day to play it again. It's just that damn good. Number five, Yoshi's Story. Now the N64 was more than just a 3D powerhouse. It could also shine as a 2D machine, and Yoshi's Story certainly takes advantage of that. Number six, Golden Eye 007. If it's N64, it's gotta be Golden Eye. Now, of course, there's going to be some hard-as-hell licensing battles involved to get this thing going. Not only with Rare, but of course, whoever owns the properties to James Bond at the moment. But this game is just too significant for the N64's library to just leave it behind. And no picking odd job. At this moment, we're going to take a moment to have a number six and a half. Just in case... The lawyers at Nintendo can't get GoldenEye. I recommend Resident Evil 2. Now, RE2 may have come to the PlayStation first, but cramming all that FMV into a tiny cartridge? That was pretty damn impressive. It's certainly a solid second choice if you can't get GoldenEye. Number 7! Gauntlet Legends. Now who doesn't love some gauntlet? Get your friends together, pick out your classes, grab four controllers, and murder wave upon wave of enemies. Mega Man 64. You gotta have the Mega Man. And this is a damn solid port of Mega Man Legends. Originally for the PlayStation, yes. But it's a great example of how low poly doesn't need to be muddy and ugly, but can be bright and colorful with the use of large cartoony textures. Number nine, Wave Race 64. Sure, the N64 was host to lots of racing games, but Wave Race deserves special credit for its excellent water physics. Number 10, F-Zero X. You gotta have some racing titles. And you really can't leave this one out when you're talking about racing. It's high speed, in your face, melt your face, driving upside down on a cylinder, high speed action. Number 11, Mario Kart 64. Probably the polar opposite of F-Zero X, but still a damn fun game. Sure, Mario Kart may have begun on the SNES, but in the 3D capabilities of the N64, it truly found its identity. Number 12, Mario Party 3! Now, the N64 was definitely a party machine, being the first console to come with four controller ports. 
Of course, you had your options of what Mario Party games to choose. I choose three, just because. Two is also a valid choice. One, we don't need any more palm injury lawsuits. Number 13, Super Smash Brothers! You really didn't think I was going to leave that one off the list, did you? Number 14, Donkey Kong 64. All right, you Kong donkeys, I'm sure you're saying, but that's a rare game. But Donkey Kong is clearly Nintendo's intellectual property, so I don't think there's going to be much trouble getting it on the list. Number 15, Diddy Kong Racing. Yes, another racing game. I'll be honest, I don't even like racing games that much, but man, did the N64 have some that I loved anyway. And this sure is one of them. Number 16, WWF No Mercy. Now the N64 saw its share of great wrestling games, was a really hard call between this and WCW versus NWO. But I think this is the most fully featured of the wrestling games on the N64 and will overall be the best option to go with. Number 17, Kirby and the Crystal Shards. Yeah, you got to have those mascot games. That's the only reason it's on the list. Kirby's a classic Nintendo mascot and we got to fill out the list. Not a bad game, either. Number 18, Mischief Makers. A great example of amazing 2D on the N64, a game not nearly appreciated enough. Number 19, Sid and Punishment. Now, sure, this is an import, but the localization was so completed before its cancellation that it was even offered on the Wii Virtual Console. What? So why not take advantage of that? Plus, it's awesome shoot the shit out of everything gameplay. You're flying on a hovering piece of rubble, taking on an entire Air Force with your little dinky pistol, and it's freaking amazing. Play it. Number 20, Paper Mario. The N64 was pretty starved for RPGs. So this might be our only chance to fill that gap. Number 21, Doom 64. Sure, there's lots of FPS games on the N64, but what's so great about Doom 64, it wasn't just a port of Doom. It was an entirely new Doom game, and not enough people have had a chance to experience it. Number 22, Castlevania. Legacy of Darkness. Hey, hey, wait, wait, put down the brick. Listen. Okay, I get the N64 games in Castlevania series. They're kind of controversial. They're not the most popular. But hey, have you even played Legacy of Darkness? It was a vast improvement over Castlevania 64. And in many ways, it was the game that Castlevania 64 was meant to be the first time if it hadn't been rushed out the door. It's dark, creepy, and atmospheric, and I think enough time has passed that a new audience can give it a chance. Plus, it's Castlevania, and you need a Castlevania entry on a Nintendo system. Number 23, Ogre Battle 64. Now, I'm not a big player of strategy games myself, but this game has a tremendous cult following, and I think that more than justifies its inclusion. Number 24, Harvest Moon. It's the start of a popular series, with a simple but engrossing premise. Also, it's a nice break from all the ultra-violence that was so popular in late 90s gaming. Number 25, Pilot Wing 64. Yeah, sure, some people would call it a glorified tech demo, but damn, what a tech demo it is. Number 26, Fighter's Destiny 2. Again, with an obscure game, the N64 had a few fighting games, but the Fighter's Destiny series used a three-fall system similar to Olympic Karate that made it very different from most other 3D fighters of the time and it was a sequel that was much superior to its original iteration. Number 27, 
Mortal Kombat Trilogy. It was really hard to choose between this one and Mortal Kombat 4. I like both games, but since there's already a 3D fighter on the list, I thought it best to include a 2D fighter as well. An MK Trilogy, it's a massive one, featuring every Mortal Kombat character in the series up to that point. Number 28, Bomberman 64. Sure, it was a departure from the classic Bomberman formula, but it's still a quality game in its own right that, again, not enough people had played. Number 29, Mario Tennis. We gotta put some sports ball on the list, right? And number 30, Pokemon, wait for it, Snap. Yeah, that was a really hard choice for me to make. I could have gone with one of the Pokemon Stadium games, but their main feature is an extra piece of hardware and linking to games that are no longer out. You're really not going to get the full enjoyment of Pokemon Stadium on something like an N64 Mini, assuming the thing got made. So, why not include a fully featured game that is complete in itself right out of the box? So there you go, a whopping 30 games for an N64 Mini. We'll probably see it next year. Now, games that didn't make the list. First of all, a shit ton of rare games. We're talking, aside from GoldenEye, Perfect Dark, Turok, Turok 2, Conker's Bad Fur Day, Killer Instinct Gold, and Jet Force Gemini. Games I freaking loved, all of them, but Rare is owned by Microsoft now, so what are you gonna do? It's just too much for the lawyers to fight. And if Nintendo did manage to get GoldenEye, then they've done enough fighting already. Sure, I'd love them to be on there on my fantasy console, it also wouldn't stop at 30 games, but... Reality being what it is, I wouldn't expect them. 1080 snowboarding. Again, I think racing and sports are just well represented enough already. Same goes for Mario Golf. We've already got a Mario sports game on that list. Rayman 2. Listen, I've played it. I like Rayman, but Rayman 2 is not a very good Rayman game. There are plenty of ports of it out there already. It's too damn difficult. The graphics are too dull and ugly for Rayman, and it's just not a good Rayman game, and not really a good game at all. Some other good racing games left off the list because we have enough good racing games already. Cruisin' USA, Excite Bite 64, and Automobili Lamborghini. Simply... The racing genre is well represented enough already. Lastly, I'm just going to throw in a few extras. Games that I would include if I could exceed the 30 game limit. Blast Core, Body Harvest, Robotron 64, Mortal Kombat 4, the aforementioned shit ton of wrestling games, 1080 snowboarding, Mystical Ninja, starring Goemon, Glover, Hybrid Heaven, Shadow Man, Starcraft, Tetrasphere, Mace the Dark Age, War Gods, Clay Fighter, 63 and a Third, Sculptor's Cut, The Forsaken, Road Rash, 64, Space Station, Silicon Valley, and South Park. Have I left anything out? Let me know in the comments below, but that's what I'd like to see on an upcoming N64 Mini. This is Vinny D out! Be good.